So hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, our next class uh, of marriage and family. We are into our third week of our class and uh, due for uh, the next lecture. Um, so the last time that we started off, we we have had an exciting start, exciting discussions. The last time we did talk about specific areas of preparation that we need to um, be ready before we consider marriage. Um, we did look at seven specific areas. Uh, we ran through them. But I think before we get uh, going into um, our next uh, section, um, I would like a few of you to maybe give me your thoughts about what were some of the areas that we covered, some key learnings that you took away, uh, some key learnings that you um, have decided to probably start working, whether you're married, whether you're unmarried, either of them. So quickly, maybe the first two, three minutes, just for a essential recap for all of us, as well as uh, for those who are in our e-learning uh, portal as well. Yes. Maybe would like to hear people who've never spoken up until now. Would be great to hear you as well. What were some of the areas we spoke about for preparation and uh, any key learnings that you took away, uh, which you are able to apply in your life right now? Okay, uh, we need an I'll opening share. batsman. Okay, I'll, Man, do, I'll, I'll back thank first. You, thank you, yes, yes. Um, the key uh, things that uh, I started learning on from last uh, last last lesson was one was uh, becoming the best I can I can I can become to prepare for marriage, and second one is emotional uh, health. So mm -hmm. uh, it's good if I'm 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 at my best. So that's when I meet someone else or when when I start living with my wife all the emotional baggage I took from my past, not past life, but growing up for the last 30 years, I don't, I don't, it doesn't cause problems in, in, in the future. And the third one was personal management, how I manage my time, how I manage my finances, how I, time, I manage uh, household, my, even though I'm still single, I'm, how do I manage my house? Is it a mess or, yeah. And the fourth one, uh, I think those relationship skills and it is we need to improve on our relationship skills because it's it's it will be disastrous if i go into marriage or if we go into marriage and our relationship skills are not there so people will will yeah there will be trouble and the fifth one is overcoming the past abuse things that's happened in the past we shouldn't we should resolve those before we go into relationships or marriage. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much, uh, Mangi. You you brought it, <clears throat> brought the first five points up uh, beautifully. Thank you so much. Okay, we have two more points. Anybody would like to bring that up? So Kennedy has said money matters and faith related issues. Okay. Um, anyone else? Uh, so I think uh, Kennedy has brought about one more point. So there was one last point that was that needs to be covered, which we covered. Anyone else who remembers? Jog your memory. Anybody? Last one point. You have the notes in front of you and... Uh, a quick run through of your notes would be great, you know, like a recap, like we would do in school. You know, when the teacher asks for a question, there's a book under the desk and you quickly look up and say, okay, I think I got my answer. So that's fine. You can do that too. No? Okay. So the last point communication as being a backbone okay great yes that comes as a part of uh, um, part of relationship skills yes uh, and the one last point that maybe we haven't covered 
chastity. Okay, so it's it's being sexually um, pure and you know purity um, before we consider marriage uh, in the way that we um, consider our sexual appetites, our sexual thoughts, our sexual actions, being free from addictions, as well as making a commitment to be um, to. Um, stand in purity before the Lord, confessing any form of uh, um, sin in that area so that we can we can walk into marriage free. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so today we are going to be going into our next uh, portion. Again, an extremely exciting part of um, the, the, the course, especially for those who are not yet married. Uh, and uh, so, so again, for those of us who are married, continue to stay married. And even if you do find certain uh, situations that may not be uh, probably, you know, certain recommendations or certain certain principles we are we are bringing up, let's look at improving ourselves within the marriage that we are in. Okay, so our uh, uh, our topic for today is making a choice how do we make a choice when we would when we are considering marriage so what this chapter looks into is certain practical and biblical guidelines as you go about choosing a partner now even as there are so many of us from different cultures from different places the methods that we may use may vary across uh, cultures. So, so the context in how marriage takes place, in how we make those choices can differ um, depending on uh, on the culture. So across cultures we are we understand that it can be different. Uh, and we also know that we may not all be in a situation to have an opportunity to apply all of these principles because there could be different factors that affect the choices we make. It could be uh, factors considering, um, you know, the homes we are in. Uh, maybe it could be parental influences. It could be societal influences. It could be cultural influences. So it could there could be certain constraints, um, and um, as a result, what we would you know, if you find yourself in a position like that, allow the Lord to lead you and trust that the Lord will do what is best for you as you make that, uh, as you make some of those decisions. Okay. So, because um, we do understand that in some cultures, uh, you, you may not have the freedom to choose your own partner. Uh, and, and, you know, there may be, uh, maybe, if, a lot more of parental uh, decision making that happens in that so if that is so and and you know you respect that culture uh, we we want to um help you see that leave it to the lord and and the lord will guide you i mean speak to the lord about it and he will guide you through that okay so we're going to be looking at um uh, some principles of you know how can we can we make a choice so i think for those maybe we can begin by starting um you know for those of us who are married how did you make your choice of a uh, of marrying the person you have married and I mean, I, i'm sure we'll get some funny answers too but but that's okay we're we're learning together we're we're understanding we're supporting each other we're learning from our mistakes uh, for the younger people who are yet to get uh, married. Yes, so how did some of you make your choice? <laughs> Samuel, they're all <laughs> waiting for, to hear from you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, um, one is I, I, I think got married at an early age. Um, I mean, I was, what, 26, I think. 26, 27, and um, I didn't prepare well. Uh, I didn't have right guidance. Uh, but uh, how do how did I determine? Um, I think I just knew it somewhere. I, I don't know. Like I can't define it, but I just knew that I had to marry this person that I had met, uh, that I had been seeing, and 
and uh, yeah, we just decided to get married. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? How did you make the choice of uh, getting married to the person you're married today? Brother Charles? Oh, oh, you're asking Brother Charles to speak. Okay, I thought Brother Ch uh, Hope you're not married, right? Hope you're, that's why you're so excited about this class. I can share mine. Can you hear me? Yes, Shay, I can hear you. <laughs> who, who is asking me? Who is asking me? <laughs> Hope is asking you, Charles. Okay, so uh, for me, um, I would say, uh, I came out of a relationship you hope. Which, was, which was supposed to lead to a marriage and um, that didn't work. Uh, so I just came out of it with just the focus, just to concentrate on myself, to build myself and get closer to God. But there was a, part, there was a friend who I'm married to now. Um, we were always talking to each other at a point we kind of caught communication and later on we we started communicating but a day came when i realized that within me i had this impression that there was more to our relationship than just we being friends so i decided to take it to god in prayer waited some days to really seek the lord because i wanted to be sure that this was the right person so I prayed about it, and I was convinced and fully convinced that she was the one. And then, yeah, that was how I found out that she was the one, just going to God in prayer and seeking his face. That was it. Yeah. Thank you, Shay. Thank you. Yeah, so Kennedy says uh, he made a choice because he loved her dancing style and beauty. Wow. Amen. Okay. Anybody else? Anyone here made a choice because uh, their parents made the choice? Anyone here? Okay. Or any other reason? Yes, Charles. Charles? I am. Not able to hear you. Answer? Can I answer hope? Yes, Charles. Yes, you may. Yes. Yes, you can answer hope. Can I answer hope? Yes, Charles, you may answer. Uh, uh, Charles, we're not able to hear you. Maybe uh, you could put it up on chat me, oh. because you can't hear me. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, can hear you now. Now you can hear me. Uh, only that the 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 hands are crowing yes, and they are hear you like now. it affects the the quality of my 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 yeah. voice. Okay, go ahead and say yes. Um. Me, I loved. I I I loved the way she spoke, and I loved the way she did her work. Okay, thank you, Charles. Hope I hope you got your your answer from Charles. Okay, all right. So we let's look at certain biblical, practical ways that we can make a choice for. So. Again, hope pay the way she pay spoke, good attention. The way she uh, did okay, her I think work. Nisha has written something. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Okay, so Nisha says uh, she had come out of a bad relationship and wanted to straighten her life. She decided to marry due to a parent's pressure. I made a choice to marry my husband. Wooed me so much. I was totally stricken. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nisha. Great. Okay. So uh so let's let's look at some ways of what are certain things that we really need to consider. So one of the um important things as you consider marriage is to understand whether there is uh, the principle of agreement coming together in the principle of agreement. So if you were, if you were to look at scriptures, um, certain scriptures that comes out 
where uh, you know and I'm, and I'm just going to name a few in genesis 224 where you know we've spoken about this where we said uh, where the verse says, therefore, a man leaves his father and mother, embraces his wife, that they become one flesh. Okay, so the principle of agreement there. Or in Amos 3.3, 3, it says that if if two people don't walk in hand, hand in hand, um, they aren't going to go anywhere. Okay, there again, there's a principle of agreement. Or in Mark 3.25, it says a house that is divided against itself will not stand, again, a principle of agreement. So when we're looking at a principle or a place of agreement, we are essentially looking at where we can be compatible. Where, uh, so what is compatibility? Compatibility is a place um, or an ability to exist together in agreement. Okay, so existing together in agreement. It is being yoked together. That, that's what we, we talk about being placed uh, in agreement. It is to come to a place of understanding that despite the fact that there may be differences, we work together in uh, and, and we, we, we take that as an opportunity to work together. So our differences don't divide us, but it unites us to help us to uh, grow together to help us to work together um, in in our life our life ahead. So remember, marriage is one not just about not only about finding the right person, but it is also about working together in agreement. Okay. So by so when when we look at marriage, we are looking at the the union of not of two different individuals but a union of three of three of our realms or our entities that is our body our spirit as well as our soul and uh, that's what we need to look at to specifically see if there is a place of compatibility so we're going to be defining four specific realms or areas of compatibility that we look into firstly um, you know, physical, that's that would consider the body, then emotional and intellectual, which will which will bring about the soul, and spiritual compatibility, which brings about the spirit. And lastly, what our purpose or our direction in life needs to be. So remember once again, compatibility does not mean that you find uh, the exact replica of you. And that's what I do see in counseling. You know, over years, people come in for counseling and say, we just figured that we're not, we are not compatible. Actually, if you look at it, you know, you will not find an exact replica of you that actually matches um, you, you know, word by word. And um, that's not what, what we are looking for. It is Compatibility means an, an ability or a place or a principle of agreement that you are willing to walk in as you are joining in together so that there is unity and strength uh, in that relationship. Okay, so when we're looking at uh, um, these areas, we're going to be looking at four areas of compatibility. So uh, the, the first area that I'd like to look at, we'll start with the, uh, you know, with the, with the most important one for um, you know, as we see people, you know, that that may appeal to your senses is one is, yes, of course, the physical compatibility. Now, it is important to be attracted to one another. It is, uh, you need to be able to appreciate and like uh, each other physically. Now, this is something that needs to be considered. And there is absolutely nothing wrong in uh, being... Um, excited about the beauty and the appearance of somebody okay and like, like Kennedy said he appreciated the beauty and there's nothing wrong with that just that it needs to have its rightful place and and shouldn't be the core reason or decision making factor for uh, for choosing the partner that is not the the cover is not the only criteria there is a lot more under the cover right but of course, you should be attracted. You should be, um, uh, you should like 
the the physical appearance of the person and i like we said there's nothing wrong with it the next area would be of course the emotional or the intellectual compatibility now like we spoke about you know earlier as as we we was we were talking about preparing for marriage is that um we connect to people uh, whatever our relationships are we connect on the level of the soul you know our minds connect together our emotions the way we decide the way that we reason out the way that we think you know that's what brings about a connection with people so in marriage it is necessary to look for that ability to connect to the soul that is the mind the will the emotions the reasoning part of it the intellectual part of it so some questions that you really need to check is when i talk to this person am i able to uh, relate to them emotionally and intellectually are we at the same wavelength you know do we uh, do we have common interests of topics that 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 we can converse in are there specific areas of interest that we can share share we can relate to each other we can enjoy uh, with each other um even as we relate these topics is there something that there is, seems to be an understanding uh, to it is there a respect of difference of opinions that may that may come up come about so that's on the intellectual level on the emotional level um is the person uh, are we able to understand each other's emotions um are we able to uh, um you know understand the kind of emotions that rises within us as we relate to to others are we able to um uh, uh, are we able to sort out differences and uh, you know uh, emotionally be mature in the way that we relate to one another so you you specifically looking at a maturity in in a level of uh, level of emotions as you're relating to one another like for example let's say you know you're you're relating to someone and someone is emotionally very mature and someone who isn't right and and there of course you will you will definitely see the differences in the way that uh, that they work together in these emotions now uh, so so let's let's um, also be careful to know that 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 in your initial times of of uh, understanding each other and i think sam brought up this question it's not you will not really be able to know everything about the person or the way that they emote at at your very at your very beginning but you know that the start in itself is good there should be at least some kind of a point or a common ground in how you relate to one another so something that i do keep telling um you know my my uh, uh, young people who who do come to get married is you know ask hypothetical questions and find out how would they uh, how would they emote at a time like that how would they relate what kind of a decision would they make you know what happens because you kind of get some kind of a rough idea about, about how they emotionally work you know so ask those questions bring up hypothetical uh, questions maybe things that you've seen around you bring that up and and find out you know if something like that were to happen what would your response be and it 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 really helps to give you an understanding of their their emotional understand uh, their emotional place okay so like i want to reiterate again um now some of us who may be married may re realize that that there may be a very uh, there may be incompatibility in this area now please do not use this as an excuse to keep away rather see the difference and uh, maybe if you need to get help to work on this specific area of your life go ahead and do that ask for the lord's help and wisdom as you deal with um uh, with these uh, emotional uh, differences that you may may see okay the third uh, level important is to be in a state of spiritual compatibility so one of the markers that we need to understand is that it's not just sufficient to be believers right it's uh, or or those who are in the lord while it is of course absolutely necessary we also need to take it a step higher to see if as believers you hold a similar commitment or a similar discipline or a similar 
uh, a passion in the in in <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> in your walk with God, and to uh, find out maybe you know uh, simple questions like uh, um, you know if God calls you uh, where would where where do you think God is calling you to or um, you know if He were to call you to to something quite contrary to what you're doing what would your response be you know what what are your devotional uh, time like with the, with the Lord how much do how much of Scripture do you learn what what kind of um, um, service uh, are you at your local church now these are important questions to ask because you know considering that two people having two different ideas about what kind of spiritual involvement they need to have and uh, you know coming to a place and seeing that you know it uh, maybe one is strongly devoted the other is mediocre there's mediocrity in in their devotion there, there can be a sense of uh, um an incompatibility or a sense of mismatch. So ensuring, asking those questions and finding that out. Again, um, that even if, even if, I mean, for those of us who are married, if you're in a place you do find incompatibility, the same principle holds, please continue there and um, patiently work through this. The last one, of course, is your compatibility in life's calling. So uh, a very important area uh, in, of compatibility is li life's calling. Um, in to understand uh, what do you think you should be doing in your life, maybe five years, 10 years, 15 years <clears throat> down uh, you know, the line. Uh, although we may not all know everything about what our future is, but there needs to be a sense of like a recognition that this is what God has called us, called me to pursue. For so, so for example, uh, and and I do see there are often there are times that you know when couples do come, they it, it's not thought of, and uh, um, it, it's fine, and they may take some time to think of, but that's very important to discuss and to bring about so that. The, the both the man and the woman in the relationship is aware because one may be very clear about what their calling in life needs to be. They probably, you know, have it uh, understood and charted out and they would want to pursue it and uh, and is looking for a partner who will support and help them through that while also giving them the freedom to um, uh, move into their own calling. But um, when people do come together, uh, you know, it is fairly necessary to understand if there is a calling that the other person is. Else, what happens is there is dissatisfaction. It can result in in a marital conflict. So these are four broad areas that that you can look into, and something that uh, needs to you need to take time to to discover to understand and that helps of course as you communicate as you watch the person as you um, get reports maybe from from uh, from others uh, uh, understand a lot more about uh, their lifestyle so uh, a lot of this uh, you know these are these are certain principles that you can use as you uh, as you are looking in for a partner now as we uh, understand this it's also important to watch out for some signs that may be like red flags um, it is important to look for them it may not come out uh, just like that without you actually asking them okay and some of these and what are these warning signs and why is it important because these warning signs could be potential conflicting areas that may rise up in marriage. And um, it is important to address these areas before marriage. So when you make your choice, um, I think there's something that we need to keep in mind, that there are two areas of our mind that may be in conflict. One is our emotions, and one is our head, or our thoughts, or our reasoning. Okay. Um, very often, in love, a lot of people go by emotions or are blinded by their emotions. But to set back your emotions, 
and begin to reason, begin to understand, begin to tease out is very, very important. So being careful not to be overwhelmed by your emotions and being blinded at the signs that may be steadily at your face. Um, and a lot of that, uh, you know, I have very many examples of uh, people, young people who've got into marriage um, being unyoked um, uh, and feeling that it is God's calling for them to save the other. Uh, that only if they do married, uh, do they get married, will they be saving the other person or it's up to them for the salvation of their souls. Now that's being blinded and that's being, you haven't reasoned out, understood, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the knowledge of God's will, which is very clear in scripture that says, do not be yoked with an unbeliever. So that is one of the examples of being extremely <clears throat> overwhelmed by an emotion. Another area uh, could probably be, um, you know, you, um, especially when people are steeped in addictions and uh, maybe a believer may probably steeped in addiction um, and one of the partners feel that it is again their calling to free them from that, to break their chains. There again, uh, not being overwhelmed by emotion but, but reasoning out, seeing if the person is going through uh, a restoration phase is going through a place where they are able to change certain things. So here are some things that you need to consider, you know, what are some of the warning signs? So um, first and foremost, I, I believe it's a lack of preparation. For someone who is going to be married, you know, how much are they actually preparing for them? Uh, preparing? Are they only looking for the Mr. Perfect or Miss, Miss Perfect? Or are they doing their preparation and working on themselves, knowing that they are an equal contributor into that union? So is there a lack of preparation? And consider these seven areas that we spoke about and find out if there is a lack of preparation. If there isn't a knowledge of it, I'd say give them you know, give them a copy of this and say, hey, you know, I'd like you to read this and um, maybe let's work it out together. So yes, a lack of preparation. The second could be uh, certain signs of immaturity. You know, does, uh, wh when you assess the person, do they seem responsible enough to take up um, this responsibility of marriage and family to be able to lead a home either as the head of the family or as a, as, as a helper of the family, wherever their roles are, I mean, a man or a woman, whatever their roles may be, is there a sense of maturity in the way that they uh, are looking at, at this phase? The third is, are there any kind of weaknesses in their character? So the, we need to understand that sometimes there can be certain serious weaknesses, right? They may be into big addictions, multiple relationships, maybe certain emotional issues. Um, there, there can be uh, uh, issues in, in staying put in a, uh, in, a, in a job. It could be issues in their attitude. So are there specific character weaknesses that could uh, be detrimental to the marriage. The, the fourth one is uh, a sense of parental control. You know, when you're looking at, so something that, uh, you know, is very strongly seen in the culture that I grew up in, you're just not getting married to a person, you're getting married to a family. Okay, and sometimes I think uh, that's quite true in the culture that I'm in, because everything seems a lot more intertwined and enmeshed in the culture I'm in, that uh, just marrying the person is not enough, but also looking at what the family is. So what is what have been, what are certain signs that you need to take care of? You know, is there a lot of involvement and control where, um, where which can come in as an interference in the building up of the union? The next one is, uh, dependence, you know, is there a sign of parental dependence? Is the person too dependent and attached to their parents? Um, uh, so, uh, like, you know, in decision making or in resolving their emotions or in financial help, 
is there a lot of dependence on uh, on the on the family of origin that's again another sign the the thing that you can you, you should be doing is not making a decision in isolation but getting the insight from from people who are close to you from your family maybe from church goers from friends from your mentors uh, to really understand what they think about the person you are considering and whether they are also able to see some of these warning signs that uh, you've probably picked up okay all right so we spoke about uh, being in a principle of agreement with specifically four realms of compatibility the physical the emotional intellectual the spiritual life's calling and we did speak about some warning signs so um is there uh, do you does the class have any specific question that you all can raise up right now any question oh, hello yes christopher uh yeah no i'm not sure where this fits in but uh, um one of the things i think um, is that there are some uh, you know um fundamental uh, you know differences in the way uh, uh, you know a man and a woman you know sort of react and you know how they respond it could be you know in, in the emotional uh, aspect particularly and uh, uh, i think we uh, you know in that in that compatibility sort of uh, emotional compatibility area uh i think there is there is a need to be able to accept that and uh you know realize that uh there is this this difference i mean i i remember i think i'm not sure where uh you know anyone has read this book but there was this book i think uh, a long time ago a long time maybe what 20 years back which was written like this called uh, uh, men are men are from mars and uh, women are from venus and uh you know it's just some sometimes just the the the, the makeup of uh, you know how uh, of of the man and the woman and how they you know how they react and i think acceptance is 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 key in that area and uh, you know being able to have that uh, emotional maturity to to uh, to be able to uh, uh, accept that and also you know realize that uh, that that those differences do exist so not sure where that sort of fits in this in this in this sort of uh, discussion that's a good point christopher thank you for bringing that up so um so i yes uh, christopher you are right that the way that men and women are wired emotionally wired are very different and um, uh, it's interesting that the way that uh, um, men women emotionally respond so in general now this is a general principle okay there are exceptions to this that men are uh, are sometimes a lot more um uh, you know uh, they they are more task oriented women are more people oriented relationship oriented so especially when it comes to emotions um men do things whereas women may feel things as they do so and as a result you know there can be conflicts that come about so a good understanding of how a man and a woman works would be uh, you know is excellent i do want to recommend um uh a series on i am able unable to get his name but but i i will um a series he's by it's by a pastor and uh uh he brings this out and and it's it's available on youtube so he's a christian past pastor who brings about the differences of a man and a woman and uh it he talks of uh, uh, i i i will research who the person is in my next class and i'll tell you who it is so he he brings that out beautifully with illustrations as to how we emote whatever however it is not just to accept but also be willing to meet maybe the emotional needs of the other so for example let's say one partner is a very practical person whereas the other partner being extremely emotional okay so 
um, being in the state that you are and saying, you know, this is how I'm made, I'm quite practical, emotions don't touch me, or I'm quite emotional, being practical is, you know, is a face away, um, that will not work. It is coming together of these two people, seeing how they can work together in order to meet you know, some form of practicality and some form of emotionality. So even as you're coming together to find a partner, uh, let's say you're an extremely emotional person and you do require some form of emotions from the other. So if you get married to a person who doesn't talk, who doesn't, you know, who, who feels feelings are taboo, you're going to be in a difficult place. So that's what I meant also by saying, ask those hypothetical questions like you know when you're in a conflict what would you do so they may say you know i just sh uh, shut down and i just sit in my room and by the next morning i'm fine i don't need to talk about it i don't need to do anything about it um so you you get an understanding of that so maybe you say hey you know this is the way that i am i'd like to be open for discussions although i know you may require your space but i do need some point of discussion would you be open to that so that helps you to understand where the compatibility is yes acceptance is important but also to know at what level of emotional in in the emotional spectrum that they that they are in so uh, to to discover that to discover uh, how they are because not all men are unemotional or not all women are emotional there can be degrees that you will find so it helps in communicating when you before you make that uh, choice okay um, there's a question by Kennedy can being sexually hyperactive be treated as a red flag so uh, as we said, all of physical aspects do have its place. But if there's anything that is beyond um, uh, beyond what is needed, okay, can be considered as a red flag. So, uh, I, and I think that there needs to be an assessment on that. The primary understanding when we're looking at marriage is progressing the kingdom of God. And if there's anything else that comes, uh, any step or any priority that comes before that, you know, that's something that we need to look at as a, as a question. So can being sexually hyperactive, yes, it can be treated as one, especially if it doesn't have its, I mean, since you said hyperactive, I'm, I'm assuming that it it is not in in its limits or it's not in what is needed it's not respectful to the other person as well so that's that's how i've taken those two words okay i hope i've answered uh, you kennedy and christopher okay now even as we go ahead with uh, <clears throat> with finding uh, the right partner it's important to also uh, know what is it that you can expect and what is it that you can give so uh, you know the the two scriptures that that specifically come about here is um being one in romans 14 5 it talks about how each of us should make up our own minds and be uh, be clear about what is it that we need <clears throat> or what we expect Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> and that's something. So so just as we look at the scripture, you know, that uh, that it, it says in Romans 14, 5, each should firmly make up your own mind. We know that the scripture is not in the context of marriage, but it helps us understand that we do have a responsibility in what we choose to do. So when we make a personal choice, like, you know, when you when you look in for a job, God has given you that responsibility to make your choice. And you do that with the understanding you have, with being in God's will, by, by, by the knowledge that God's given you, the reasoning God's given you. And that's how you make up your mind. And, and just, just like that, even in marriage, you need to, even as you make your choice, you need to take on that responsibility, being sure that this is what is this is what you would desire. This is what you want when it is in accordance also to God's 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 word. So as you prepare, when you make a choice of a life partner, you need to also be clear of the kind of person you would like and have those expectations realistic for those for your for for you 
for for your partner so for those of you who are not yet married and those of us who are married it is good to go through some of these questions um and help us revisit and i keep telling um, you know people who've come in for counseling go back and revisit your expectations because the expectation that you had when you were a young bride or a young groom is not one that you will have when you are a mother of two or a father of five right they change and it's always good to revisit those expectations and um because that not just improves the quality of the relationship it also brings you to a place of understanding where they may be at at a certain point of time i'll give you an extremely practical uh example um you know especially when when you become new parents uh, and i'm sure maybe some of the men may agree suddenly the the wife becomes uh, you know becomes responsible and attention is divided time is um, you know is crunched it is it is again divided and the woman seems to have, the mother seems to have have changed in leaps and bounds whereas the poor young husband is still you know awaiting attention awaiting a uh, presence awaiting love awaiting you know that morning cup of coffee and that good hug and suddenly you know in right after the child is born there seems to be a change in that and that can be an extremely conflicting area in the life of a, a life of a couple right so uh, so to be able to rework some of those expectations hearing those expectations out are also very helpful even you know in the course of marriage so much before you get married find out what are some of the qualities uh, and traits that you're looking for you know put that down what is what are some of the qualities um, that you are willing to offer what are some of the uh, um, strengths that you are willing to bring up what is your picture of marriage what is the home and the family that you want to build what do you see as marriage should be like so you know i have answers like i want marriage i want my home to be an open home where there are people who come in they walk in there is a meal there that's offered you know anyone can walk into your doors why is this important because the person you're marrying may saying hey you know i like my private space my private life i'm not a i'm not a person who who wants many people so these are important to understand okay uh, also to understand what what would you help towards building this marriage and and this family so thinking through these questions uh, are uh, you know make it very practical and make it make it real so so don't get too fan uh, you know too fancy and you know think of marriage like 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 a disney story right um, be practical and look for clarity even as you're describing your expectations and remember you may not always get everything that you want um and uh, so so figure out what is absolutely critical and what are some of the things that may not be that essential so that this sort of a framework will definitely give you the guidance and and the help in making your final decision okay all right is there any question before we uh before we close our lecture uh for the hour any questions strange i thought i'd have many questions today especially in making a choice okay all good all oh, good okay great okay so um we shall we shall meet uh, for our uh, next class in around 10 minutes thank you